I started designing an ITB intake system for my Miata race car and since then it's sort of evolved and taken on a whole life of its own and because of a decision I made two years ago to introduce myself to this guy at Willow Springs, you might recognize him, he only has like, I don't know, 8 million subscribers on YouTube. I now have this huge super fancy 3D printer getting shipped to my shop. I'm going to go over all the details between point A and point B later on in the video but for right now. Let's look at some intake designs. So to any viewers that are new to the channel, thank you for tuning in. This is the third video in a series, so if you don't want to get ahead of yourself, you can go ahead and get your meat and potatoes up here in the corner and come back for dessert. If you have seen the other two videos, uh, you'll recognize this Venturi system vacuum tube design that I was working on. So a couple of you guys pointed out that the tube's quite small, so it's not going to be able to move very much air, which I agree with. Also, one of the problems that I made when I designed this thing is I made the nipple 11 millimeters, which no hose fits. So that was my fault. But there are a couple of other issues that I want to point out that make me not want to go this route. But don't be dismayed. There is still hope for the multi-length runner design, and I'll get to that in a minute. So one of the issues is the air has to pass around the vacuum tubes themselves because they're inside of the air box. So that creates an obstruction and it's gonna create turbulence because, whoa, I'm okay. So this is what the tubes are gonna look like inside of the air box and the air has to go around these things. It's gonna tumble, it's gonna create turbulence, the it's not gonna get a smooth flow of air through the runners. The other issue is the diameter of the choked off portion itself. I mentioned how this diameter times four is still more surface area than the diameter of the original stock throttle body. So at stock power levels, it wouldn't create a restriction, but at some horsepower level, it's going to create a restriction. And I don't know exactly what that is, but it's going to be a lower horsepower level than this would create a restriction if I kept the diameter that it will enter the throttle body. I do agree with those of you that said that this tube is not big enough to have any significant effect on power levels. So what are we gonna do? We're going to do what some of you have also suggested and make it an electromechanical system. So the air in this design is going to enter the manifold right before it all goes into the intake valve and the tubes themselves are going to be bypassing the throttle bodies completely which will make them as short as they can possibly be. I've also increased the diameter of these tubes to say 15 millimeters or 5.8 something like that so that you can have a more substantial airflow going through them. It'll make more of an impact at high RPM which is what we're hoping for. But the valves, the solenoids, they can be closed at low RPM so you get the full performance benefit of the long runner. I think this way right here is probably the better way to do it. So the control system will look something like this where it looks at the RPM of the engine and the throttle position and if they both meet the requirement it'll open the valve so you get that high RPM benefit. And I also think it'd be a good idea to have some sort of fail safe in the design. So if the valve gets stuck open for some reason, if the computer sees that the throttle position is low and it's not getting any vacuum, it's just gonna cut the engine off completely so it doesn't run away. The whole reason I'm doing this in the first place, which is connecting cylinder one to cylinder three and connecting each cylinder to the next one that's going to call for air, is because I'm hoping that it's gonna create more of a uniform flow inside the air box itself. What happens when the intake valve closes, it pushes all the air back out of the velocity stack that it was coming through and the air changes direction inside of the air box. So I'm hoping by creating more of a gradual transition from one cylinder to the next, it's gonna keep the air in more of a constant motion. So many of you have pointed out how a 180 degree bend in the intake runner, it's not a good thing. I recognize that, but I wanna keep the bend because I wanna keep the runner as long as possible and I want it to fit in a certain external dimension so it fits underneath the hood. So what I'm doing is I'm redesigning the plenum to give that air as easy of a passage to make that turn as I can possibly give it. So you can kind of see what's going on here. I'm trying to give the air a constant circular pattern so that it doesn't have to change directions as it goes into that velocity stack. So most of the air is gonna come in the plenum and go straight up into the velocity stack like so. Now the air that doesn't make it into the velocity stack as soon as it comes into the plenum is gonna slip by on the outside. And on the outside, it starts off with a small gap and ends with a large gap. And I'm hoping that by slowing the air down as it makes this turn, I can have the air attach itself to these surfaces and be able to make that turn without creating too much restriction or turbulence. Will it work in practice? I don't know. Another interesting feature that this design has created is this. As the air comes in from the secondary runner, it's going to mix with air going a different direction. And because these two 
bits of air are going two different directions, they're gonna start a tumble. They're gonna create a bit of turbulence and hopefully that turbulence coming in right before the injector sprays will create a better mixture between the air and the fuel. This is a top view of the type of circular motion that I wanna see inside the air box. So as the air comes up through this small gap, it's gonna be able to wrap around the outside of the runner and come back in, change direction and go back in the other way. So everything in this plenum is designed so that the air can be constantly rotating and not going straight and changing direction. So uh, I don't really know a whole lot of math formulas, but I do know air, air goes straight good air move fast good so that's what i'm basing it on i want to be transparent with you guys about myself for a moment so i dropped out of high school when i was 16. i didn't do too well in school i didn't get my high school diploma i've since gotten my ged that was about a year ago but despite not doing too well at school i've always been passionate about learning and passionate about education and i don't want any of this to come across as a slam to higher education because i firmly believe that education is one of the most important elements of our modern society. But I know there's a lot of you guys out there like me, for one reason or another, just have a hard time succeeding at school. And despite having a passion for learning, school's just hard for some people because everybody's different. So all this is really to say that you guys are awesome because you've given me so much clarity about where this channel's going. Because I have ideas that I'm really protective of, ideas that I was basing products and whole businesses around. But after sharing this idea with you guys and seeing the kind of interaction I'm getting with the community, I want to share all of my ideas with you guys on YouTube. Because I think products are cool and businesses are cool, but learning is even cooler. So since I'm obviously learning as I go, I want you guys to have the same opportunity to learn what I'm learning. There's super big updates coming, some just later on in this video and then even more in videos to come. So if that sounds like a journey that you want to be a part of, I'd recommend getting subscribed. So how did meeting Nolan Sykes from Donut Media lead to me getting a crazy nice 3D printer? So a couple years ago, I was at Willow Springs. I was doing Spec Miata at the time. I hadn't got into endurance yet. And I saw Nolan, he was just chilling, watching, watching the cars go by, talking with the people that he was helping at the time. And I recognized his face. I, you know, got, I was like, is that, is that the dude? Got a little closer. I'm like, no, I think that's, that's Nolan, dude, that's Nolan. This was internal dialogue. Hopefully, I don't know, maybe I was mumbling. Anyway, so I went up to him, I introduced myself, asked him what he was up to there. I got to chat with him and the team that he was helping for a little bit. No one was gonna be spotting for this endurance team. And I was super interested in helping on an endurance team because I was thinking of doing endurance myself. So I wanted to get some experience. So I asked them if they needed any help and they said they were actually one guy short. They needed someone to hold the fire extinguisher. And I was like, perfectly qualified to hold a fire extinguisher. Generally like creating fires more than I like putting them out, but I think given the opportunity, I think I'd put a fire out, most likely. So I got to meet all the members of the endurance team. Um, it was real easy to remember their names because everyone was named Peter, which was interesting. I thought it was some kind of requirement or something to be on the team, but uh, yeah, that was a thing. No, but the team itself is called Technic Competition. And what they do is actually really cool. They're a 501c3 charity, and they're in the business of helping people get education, get better careers, even start businesses. And they wanna use the motorsport community as a learning tool, and also as a recipient of putting back into the community the skills and the value that they've created in individuals' lives as they've helped educate them. So I helped Technic a few more times with some of their endurance races, but fast forward to just a few months ago and head honcho Peter hooked me up with this dude named Owen. Now Owen's been 3D printing for a long time. He's going to school to be a design engineer and he wants to start a 3D printing business. So him and I got to sharing some ideas with each other. We took our ideas to Peter, which were about starting a 3D printing business. And he really liked the idea and he wanted to invest. So now as part of Technic, we have access to a huge CNC routing table, a 3D scanner, and pretty soon a massive 3D printer as well. It's a Modix Big 60. It's about two feet by two feet by two feet, really monstrous machine. So the amount of items that we're gonna be able to produce with these things is pretty huge. There've been some people that have reached out to us already. I designed and printed a AFM delete tube for a 1.6 liter Miata. We're designing a window bracket for a Porsche 356 race car. We have a super cool off-road light down in the video's description, and we're building brackets for different models, specific race cars and off-road trucks. 
to make it a quick bolt-in solution so you don't have to make your own bracket or drill holes where you don't want to. So because the large format 3D printer isn't here yet, there are certain things we can't make right now, but feel free to reach out because we can still model and we can still print things that are maybe slightly smaller in dimensions on the smaller printers that we do have. So now back to the printed intake system, let's talk about some problems. So these listed are obstacles that I'm currently facing with the prototype print. Maybe some of these will be relieved with the higher quality 3D printer, but let's go over and see what we're dealing with. The ASA, I'm not a huge fan of because it seems to separate between the layers. It seems to be a problem with the material itself because I've seen other articles online talking about it. So that might not be my ideal material for the plenum. The carbon fiber polypropylene, on the other hand, has excellent layer adhesion but it's super hard to print. It's always a trade-off, isn't it? So the problem on the O-ring groove that most of you are suggesting to me, because I might be switching from ASA to a different material for the plenum, I don't know if I'll be able to include that groove in the model. I might have to cut it in after it's printed. So that would definitely be a challenge. But if I can keep the print from warping at the bed level, I can include the groove into the product and I won't have to worry about cutting it in afterwards. As I talked about in the second video, it's really time consuming to take apart. So doing multiple dyno runs is currently a challenge, but it's all getting redesigned anyway. So that might not be an issue anymore or might be more of an issue, things you learn. And the last thing is I was considering thermoforming the upper plenum out of polycarbonate. Now that the design is more sophisticated than it was before, I don't know if that's gonna be possible, but it would certainly be cool to be able to see the stacks through the plenum. So I would like to be able to do that, but we'll see how much of a trade-off it's gonna be on the design. So don't click out just yet. There's one thing I wanted to, that's two things. There's one thing I wanted to point out about Donut Media before the video is over. So it's obvious Donut makes really cool car content, but what's not so obvious is how they present themselves with this energy that you definitely don't have to come from some royal racing bloodline or even be a mechanic to think that cars are cool. There's so much gatekeeping around certain communities and what Donut does really levels the playing field and makes it more accessible for the average person to get into cars and into car culture and enjoy the community that we all love. So thank you for what you do, Donut Media. I hope you all enjoyed this video and I hope I see you in another.